you know, the world is a pretty dangerous place where constant is surrounded by countless amounts of pathogens, viruses, bacteria, and, and other kinds of life forms. Fortunately, your immune system does a pretty damn good job at fighting those infections and protecting yourself against it. This video talks about fasting and viruses. Does individual fasting kill viruses and should you fast with a viral infection? A virus. A virus is a microscopic infectious agent that replicates inside a living organism cells. Viruses are the most numerous biological entities in the world and they're found in all ecosystems of the earth. It's debated whether or not viruses are alive or not because they act like organisms but at the same time they lack key characteristics to life like a cell structure. They're essentially just collections of genetic material like DNA or RNA that hijack the replication mechanism of the host as to spread. Some of them are relatively benign, like the common colds or flu, whereas others like HIV or Ebola are very deadly. When animals and humans are exposed to a viral infection, it creates an immune response that tries to kill the virus. Of course, the best thing you can do for your immune system is to stay healthy and supply your immune system with the right nutrients. But research also shows that fasting can also bolster your immune system. Fasting lowers inflammation and oxidative stress by producing ketones, which strengthens your cellular functioning and mitochondrial functioning. 48 to 120 hour fasts reduce pro-growth signaling and enhance cellular resistance to toxins. This inhibits mechanisms of cell replication and directs resources towards hunkering down. Fasting recycles damaged immune cells and reverses immunosuppression. It triggers cell regeneration by activating stem cells that begin to swap out damaged ones. It also activates autophagy, which recycles old weak cell components back into energy. Autophagy plays a role in shaping immune system development, fueling the host's immune responses, and directly controlling intracellular microbes as a cell autonomous innate defense. Hormesis has been shown to strengthen all parameters of the immune response. It's a dose-specific stressor that makes the body stronger in the future. Fasting and not eating are physiological stressors that in the right amounts will strengthen the entire body. There are many different kinds of viruses out there. Some of them have been shown to be eliminated by fasting, whereas others don't. Fasting for 24 hours enhances the replication of oncolytic herpes simplex virus in glioblastoma. Oncolytic viruses are viruses that kill cancer cells so they can be therapeutic. In mice, fasting for 48 hours modestly increases hepatitis B virus. However, that would be the equivalent of fasting three times longer in humans. Intermittent fasting exacerbates the acute immune and behavioral sickness to the viral mimic poly-IC in mice. IF increased the expression of neuropeptide Y in the hypothalamus and plasma corticosterone. There's some research to show that you may lose your appetite and begin to eat less during the first days of illness. Infection-induced anorexia, as it's called, is an evolutionarily viable strategy as it preserves energy and allows to focus on self-healing. This also prevents feeding the infectious agent and promotes programmed cell death or apoptosis. It's the body's natural response to fighting the infection that can be seen in humans as well as insects. A Yale 2016 study found that fasting is protective in bacterial but not viral infections. They infected mice with the bacterium Listeria monocytogenes, which causes food poisoning. The mice stopped eating and eventually recovered, but force-feeding increased their mortality. What's more, giving them glucose led to fatal reactions, whereas proteins and fat didn't. Inhibition of glucose is protective against endotoxemia. They also found that inhibiting glucose utilization was lethal in influenza infections, which is a virus. The mice died when they were denied food. However, your body can also produce glucose while fasting by breaking down fat or protein, so you're never really fully deprived of glucose. The Yale study concluded that cells need ketones to lower bacterial inflammation, whereas glucose is preferential for responding to unfolded proteins during viral inflammation. However, your body can also repair unfolded proteins with things like heat exposure, sauna and exercise. These activities also make the body create its own endogenous glucose through gluconeogenesis. So you're never really fully deprived of glucose, even while fasting. There's an old saying, feed a cold, star a fever. One study found that nutritional status regulates T cells and inflammation. Eating increased gamma interferon, which is a protein that fights infections. And fasting stimulated a release in an inflammatory cytokine IL-4. Fasting promotes sirtuins, which are silent information regulators of genes in the cell. They promote DNA repair and longevity. 
It's also found that sirtuins are evolutionarily conserved viral restriction factors. Sirtuin activating drugs have been shown to inhibit replication of influenza A and cytomegalovirus. Fasting and dark pigment polyphenols stimulate sirtuins. Generally, fasting for only like 16 to 24 hours isn't gonna kill a virus. And it's probably not going to replicate the virus either because it's actually sh such a short time frame for being in a fast state. However, if you were to go for a longer fast, then it might promote the replication of the virus. But at the same time, it, it can also kill it. So it depends on the situation, depends on the virus and depends on the particular conditions of your own body and how strong your immune system is in a particular moment. It spreads like the flu. When it comes to bacterial infections, then fasting is actually pretty effective for that, and that's gonna probably kill it faster than a viral infection. The process of degrading foreign microbial invaders is called xenophagy. It describes the breakdown and degradation of bacteria as well as viruses by autophagy. Virophagy is the autophagy of virions. Both of them can promote the elimination of infectious agents, but they can also be subverted by several viruses. Here's a research overview of how autophagy affects viruses and bacterial infections. Bacteria like Streptococcus pyogenes or pathogens such as M. tuberculosis, Salmonella and Listeria monocytogenes can be eliminated by autophagy. Autophagy can protect host cells against toxic products generated by pathogens such as Vibrio chlorella cytolysin, Bacillus anthracis lethal toxin and H. pylori. Viruses that escape or block autophagy include herpes virus, HIV-1, human cytomegalovirus, and Coxsackie virus B3, B4. Influenza A virus can also use autophagy to replicate itself. Several studies have shown that coronavirus infection induces autophagy. However, the pathway doesn't appear to be required for replicating the virus. So autophagy is probably acting as a cellular defense to the virus infection. Your body is just responding to the virus by trying to eliminate it with the involvement of autophagy. Autophagy has been shown to be beneficial against the similar coronaviruses in the past, such as SARS that happened around 2003, as well as MERS, which happened a few years later. There is no specific data about the recent coronaviruses, but it does show some potential. Autophagy's role in immunity is called immunophagy, it functions in both the innate as well as the adaptive immune system by regulating thymic function, presentation of antigens, lymphocyte homeostasis, T-cell regulation, cytokine production, control of inflammation and survival. Deficient autophagy weakens immunity and increases risk of other pathologies like heart disease, cancer and aging. However, as a result of the evolutionary arms race, viruses can evolve to hijack autophagy and use its mechanisms to survive and replicate themselves. It's important to realize that autophagy isn't this entity or a thing that's going to direct the cell's behavior. It's not going to decide what's good or what's bad. It's just functioning based upon the information that it receives from the body and the, and the cell, what kind, of, what kind of signals does it receive. That's why it may not always be the best idea to have it turned on all the time, and it definitely can replicate some of the viruses if it gets out of hand, or if the, if the viruses hijack the cell's mechanisms. It's gone airborne. Me, personally, I'm sticking to the time received eating, whether that be 16 and 8, whether that be OMADS or the warrior diet, those are relatively safe, and uh, they can be effectively used to uh, kind of get rid of some viruses or pathogens before they take hold of you. If you want to learn how to start interval fasting, then check out my free full guide to interval fasting ebook. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. House cat flu is coming, people.